On day one, I spawned into a swamp biome as Giant Alex. Whoa, I'm huge and scary and a girl? As Giant Alex, I had a total of 50 hearts. Since I was so tall, I was able to quickly spot a group of players building a house. Haha, <laughs> I have an idea. I inch towards them, looming around their base. I think I just saw something. What? Hey, stop trying to freak me out. No, wait, is that Giant Alex? The scene worked! <laughs> I can get used to this. Just then, a player wearing a hazmat suit surprised me out of nowhere. Ugh. Hey, get lost before I decide to crash your game, bub. Without hesitation, he threw a potion at me that made me incredibly dizzy. Very funny. Like that's uh, gonna do in... <laughs> On day two, I woke up trapped in a giant cage surrounded by more people in hazmat suits. What happened? Who are you people? Through the crowd, their leader emerged to give a speech, ignoring anything I was saying. Today, the secret United Syndicate has captured the creepypasta, Giant Alex. Soon we will capture and kill all creepypastas that ravage our servers. Kill all creepypastas? That plan stinks! I gotta get out of here! I then tried to break out of the cage, but it was no use. The bars were too strong. I scanned the perimeter to find an opening, but when I did, I remembered how big I was. Ugh, I can't fit through that. If only I was a small Alex. Suddenly, I began to shrink. Whoa, how would I do that? I must have growth powers. I ran through the opening and escaped the syndicate's club. Hey, she's getting away. I didn't stop until I found a good spot to hide. This group is bad news. I gotta take them down if I want to continue to haunt players in peace. On day three, I returned to my normal giant size. How'd I do that? I need to learn how to control this. I realized that those syndicate people were able to capture me way too easily. It was time for me to build a base of my own. But where to build it? Huh. To get started, I ventured out and began punching some trees to start crafting a set of wooden tools. With my new tools, I went mining for cobblestone. I tried my best to shrink down, but I couldn't, so I had to stick to the stone above ground. I gathered as much cobblestone and coal as I could get my hands on. This'll definitely come in handy. I returned to the surface to locate an area suitable for my needs. Somewhere discreet. Somewhere untraceable. Somewhere... Oh, this is a nice spot. I began building a simple house, while also making it big enough for when I'm a giant. I'll be much harder to find now. Like clockwork, a player spotted me admiring my build. Uh, is that... Are you giant Alex? Well, that was shortly. Lived. I couldn't risk my location being leaked to other players, so I used my strength to take him out. Ah! Somebody help! It's it's giant! Ah! Phew, hopefully no one heard that. When the player died, they dropped food, wool, and a bow with arrows. Sorry, buddy, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. With the wool I acquired, I crafted myself a bed and laid down for the night. Ah, uh, I think I need a bigger bed. On days four through eight, I went exploring to see what else was around me, but something was off. While investigating, I passed by an ocean littered with small pyramids. I don't think that's supposed to be there. I then found a two by two tunnel shortly after. I didn't mine here, huh? After that, I stumbled upon a leafless forest. Okay, this is getting really creepy. Maybe I should just head home. Suddenly, I was jump scared by none other than Herobrine. Ah! Whoa, calm down. I've been searching for you, Alex. Who are you? I'm Herobrine, a creepy pasta just like you. Oh, what do you want? I came to warn you that we're being hunted by the Secret United Syndicate, or SUS for short. Sus? You mean those guys in hazmat suits? <laughs> You're a little too late on that one, Chief. Why not go hide yourself? What makes them a threat are their numbers. But there are plenty of other cryptic creatures that live in this server. Make them your allies. That way we stand a chance against their organization. Good luck. Just like that, Herobrine disappeared. Make some allies. Huh, I think I can do that. On days 9 through 11, I ventured back to my home, thinking about what Herobrine had told me. Where am I supposed to find other weirdos like me? They're all probably in hiding. As I continued, I started to hear interesting noises in the distance. Huh. Better check it out. I investigated the sounds I heard to soon find a cute little orange blob being attacked by a sus member. Hey, leave that little guy alone. I tried stepping on him, but he was too quick. So I began firing a flurry of arrows at him until he was down for the count. After the battle, the little squishy monster seemed really happy that I saved it. It even gave me a temporary boost in hearts. Whoa, thanks little man. I was getting pretty low on health. How'd you do that? That's just what I do. Thank you for saving me. Those weird guys just won't leave me alone. I guess we're not too different. What's your name? Jim Kami 999. Others know me as the Tickle Monster. <laughs> I'm Alex. Nice to meet you, buddy. I remembered what Hero Brian had told me, so I asked Little 999 if he'd like to join me. Really? Me? That's 
on scroll. We headed back to my base, where I added a room for 999 to stay in. On days 12 through 13, I decided to gather more materials. First, I chopped down a bunch of trees, then went mining. Okay, there's no way I'm fitting underground. I have to focus. Tiny, tiny. Just then, I shrank to a normal player's size. Sweet, better go mining before this wears off. I went underground and found lots of coal and even some iron, which I quickly gathered. Sweet. After I returned to the surface, I automatically grew large again. I knew I would have to learn to master my powers at some point, but this worked for now. I made a furnace, then smelted the iron into ingots, and then immediately upgraded my pickaxe. After that, I killed some chickens, both are some food and their feathers. One step closer to more arrows. After that, I returned home, expanding the build to include a few extra rooms. Still a work in progress, but I'm liking it. After I finished building, the time suddenly turned from night to day. What in the world? Wasn't it just midnight? Confused, I decided to investigate. While doing so, I found a nearby village. While looking around, I was randomly teleported outside the home of Villar. Do you have a drink? No, sorry dude. Dang, I'm quite parched. Those sus guys took all of my water. Wanting to help, I crafted a bucket and fetched some water, giving it to the strange entity. Wow, thank you. Of course, but hey, you're a creepypasta just like me. Want to join my team? We're going to take down Sus. He agreed, so we both left to go back to my base. On days 14 through 17, I was exploring when I stumbled upon a camp of players having a good old time. <laughs> it's pranking time. I loomed over the trees, staring until one of the players spotted me. Bro, giant Alex is behind you. The camper looked behind him, but I shrank down before he could see me. Dude, it was probably a bird or something. Stop talking crazy. I then grew huge again. She's really there! The camper checked, but I again shrank before they could see me. This isn't funny, dude! I grew big one final time, knowing it would really freak them out. Ah! What has gotten into him? Huh? What in the world? Just then, a sus member ran up to me, cutting my fun short. And that's my signal to leave. Bye bye I ran away, but he was able to catch up to me. Finally, I'll get a promotion. We started to battle it out. I was clearly stronger than him, so I figured the fight would be easy. No matter how much I hit him, though, he wouldn't die. Is that object protecting you? You like it? Got it from our testing facility this morning. I knew this fight would go on forever, so I decided to run away and get him off my tail. Those guys are bad news. On days 18 through 23, I returned home to find Villar had set up an enchantment table in his room. Wow, pretty sweet room, man. You're more than welcome to use it, but I'll need you to bring some books and lapis lazuli to make it stronger. No problem. I set off in search of lots of sugarcane to make the paper for books. Luckily, I found a lot quite quickly. Afterwards, I managed to shrink myself temporarily and went mining to harvest a good amount of iron, coal, and even lapis for enchanting. Perfect! As I was leaving, I spotted an armed sus agent in the distance. That guy looks like he's up to no good. He began to leave, so I tailed him to see where he was going. After following him for a bit, he led me to a mysterious facility. Huh, that place is sealed shut. Good thing I'm small enough to sneak inside. Just then, I grew back to giant size. I couldn't fit anymore. Dang it! <sighs> I can't control my powers yet, but I'll have to come back when I can. On days 24 through 26, I finally returned back to my base to find the blood golem waiting for me. Aw oh, man, am I glad to see another entity. What can I help you with? Die, mortal! The blood golem began to attack me with his slamming attacks. Even though I wanted to take Herobrine's advice, I had no choice but to fight back. Despite him being smaller than me, he was incredibly tanky and powerful. After all, he was a creepypasta too. Each of his attacks sent me flying into the air. What do you want? We don't have to fight. Only one creepypasta will remain, and that will be me. I used my axe to chip away at him until he finally went down. Okay, so not all creepypastas are friendly. Noted. Upon his death, he dropped an incredibly powerful blood sword that could set enemies on fire. This will come in handy. I used my materials from the days before to craft some books and build some bookshelves. I used them to surround the enchantment table to make it stronger and then got to work. I enchanted my new sword with venom too. Afterwards, I planted some of my extra sugar cane to ensure I'd have plenty of paper in the days to come. On days 27 through 29, I went exploring in hopes of finding more cryptids to join my team. After a lot of traveling, I stumbled upon a biome filled with giant zombies. Now these are my people. Hello, giant brethren. It is I, Giant Alex. Brain. Ah, wait, 
We're the same! My pleas were useless, and the onslaught of zombies attacked. I used my blood sword to fight off the swarm. Luckily, since we are both giants, they were just like normal zombies to me. You guys aren't too tough. Keep them coming. Just then, more giant zombies emerged and began to pile onto me. I fought them off too, but the hordes wouldn't stop. Man, where were all of you hiding? I fought for what felt like hours until finally every last zombie was slain. Man, that was a lot. After that, another zombie walked up to me and I readied my weapon just in case. Yeah, sorry about those guys. They're all so uncivilized. You're not trying to smooth talk me so you can eat my brains, are you? No, no, no. Not really a fan of brains. You see, I was the original giant zombie. I've been on the server for what feels like millennia. I've outgrown my basic zombie roots. It seems like you know a lot about this server. Anyway, you want to join my cause? I'm trying to take down Sus. I'll join you, but be warned. Sus has taken down everyone I've ever cared for. I led the giant zombie back to my base and built him a giant room to fit his size. Thanks. I can't remember the last time I had a room that actually fit me. Tell me about it. On days 30 to 32, I continued my search for creepy bosses to join my cause. I traveled through multiple biomes, but there was nothing in sight until I came upon a strange railroad tunnel. At the entrance, I found a strange cryptid. Hello? He ran away inside, and I quickly followed after. Wait, I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> the monster screamed, we were teleported back to the entrance of the tunnel. Whoa! Hey, did you do that? Uh, yeah, I did. That's super cool. You think so? People are always scared of my powers. Would you like to join my team? I want to take down Sus once and for all. You know what? Count me in. The monster screamed and teleported us back home. There, I built a quick room for him to stay in. This is great! Thank you! On days 33 through 36, I was finally enjoying some peace and quiet. Ah, nobody being around is the best part about being me. Since I finally had some downtime, I crafted some iron armor just in case I would need it. Just as I finished, a ton of the sus guards surrounded the hideout. We got you surrounded, creepy pasta. Surrender now! What the? You found my hideout? Get out! The guards started to fire their weapons at me. But luckily, it seemed like they didn't have the mysterious object like the ones I faced. I fired at them from afar, then went in close with my blood sword to rack up some major damage. Being a giant made it hard to avoid their gunfire, but I did the best I could. As I thought I was close to winning, more and more troops came. What is all that racket? A little help, please? Oh, right. Come on out, boys. The rest of my cryptid friends emerged and joined in the battle. The giant zombie overwhelmed the troops by charging them down while the tunnel monster used his tremendous strength to knock them out. Villar was a bit of a pushover, but was skillful with his sword. Even 999 helped. With our combined strength, we took out the army until only one remained. How did you find me? We found it just by chance on a scouting mission. Soon enough, HQ will send more troops when I don't return. Then call them off. No can do. We don't trust radios, so I can only inform them in person. There's no way you'll get into our facility undetected. <laughs> I have my ways. I landed the finishing blow and took his hazmat suit for myself. I need to head to the sus headquarters ASAP, but first I need to do something. On days 37 through 40, I continued the expansion of my secret base. I added some more rooms for potential guests, but I knew with the growing population, I'd have to address the issue of food. I set off and found a group of chickens and sheep, which I killed for their meat, wool, and feathers. Afterwards, I used some wheat to lure cows back to my base and built them a small pen to stay in. Sweet, now we don't have to worry about food. I knew if I wanted to sneak into Sus HQ, I'd have to be able to shrink, but I wasn't sure how. On a whim, I tried talking to the giant zombie for help. Hey, been meaning to ask, how are you not burning in the sun? I've been alive for a long time. There are many things I've learned. Speaking of, would you happen to know how to manipulate your size? Like this? Just then, the zombie shrank down to the size of a normal one. Amazing! Will you train me? Yes but it won't be easy. The giant zombie took me to a clearing where we began to practice my drinking powers together. Small, 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 yes! Dang it! I practiced for what felt like hours, not taking any time to stop. I was determined to hold my small form for longer than a few seconds. Shrink, please! I managed to shrink once again, but this time I stayed small. 
You're gaining endurance, and that's good. These things take time, but you have trained well for today. Thank you! I'm gonna take advantage of this size while I can. I parted ways with the giant zombie and went mining in the underground shafts I normally can't access. There, I found lots of iron, coal, and even diamond. Finally! I headed home with my new loot and planned to craft some diamond armor for the road. When I got home though, I faced my biggest challenge yet. What am I gonna do? I quickly placed a ladder leading up to the crafting bench. Afterwards, I made my diamond armor. With all that done, I put on the hazmat suit I took from the guard and turned into a normal sized player. Now, I was ready for my mission. Time to infiltrate. On days 41 through 44, I arrived at the sus laboratory in my disguise. The place was crawling with guards. Ooh, hack natural. You're a guard too. I approached the front entrance, but was immediately stopped by another guard. Where's your badge, officer? I left it in my other hazmat suit. What's your name? Ah, uh, yeah, Sand. I, I mean, Sandy. Uh, Sandy. Uh, great to see you again. How's your brother? He's my brother. <laughs> That's for sure. He's doing great. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Classic Sandy. I quickly walked through the entrance in a cold sweat. That was close. I made my way through the halls of the facility and stumbled upon an area that was keeping tons of cryptids locked in cages. This is horrible. What is? I turned around to find a guard right behind me. This uh, weather we've been having. I know, right? Okay, I gotta go now. Bye. Aren't you going to the mixer? Uh... No one is missing the mixer. Uh, but I... Only people who were secretly cryptids would miss the mixer. And that's why I'm going! Good. On days 45 to 47, I didn't want to blow my cover, so I arrived at the mixer to find a ton of sus agents having a good time. Okay, blend in. Report that the mission led to a dead end and get out. Just then, the leader of the sus approached me. Ah, Sandy, how did your mission go? Um, sir, uh, the whereabouts of the cryptid's base was a dead end. That's too bad. Guess I'll have to start Plan B. Plan B? It's far more intense and violent, but we don't have much of a choice. Thanks, bud. The leader left, leaving me alone at the mixer. Well, that went better than expected. Just then, I had a weird feeling and I grew a little bit taller. The music stopped abruptly and every guard in the room was staring directly at me. Yeah. oh Sandy? You okay? Uh, yeah, just ate something bad? Oh no, buddy, go home, get some rest. The sus agent escorted me outside of the mixer, but just as I was about to go, he stopped me. You have an awful impression of Sandy. Die, imposter. The two of us fought it out. Aside from my giant size making me an easy target for his gunfire, he was no match for me. Still though, he was awfully resilient. He took a lot of hits and arrows from me without falling. You guys hear something? Yeah, this lit music. Turn it up. We continued to fight. With some strong hits, I managed to take him out with relative ease. I'll have to come back and free the rest of the cryptids. But first, I need to get these shrinking powers under control. On days 48 through 51, I returned back to the base and expanded on it even further. I added more rooms for recruits, but as I was about to finish up, I ran out of materials. Well, better go get some more. I left and cut down some more trees with an ax as well as mine for more cobblestone. During my travels, I discovered a massive Ikea. What is that doing here? I wanted to investigate further, so I shrank down smaller and went inside. It was absolutely huge and magical. Shopping spree! I got a look at all the different furniture they offered. Wow, that sofa looks comfy. <laughs> I can make some tasty food in this kitchen. Finally, a bed that fits my size. I took some different blocks I found for the road, just in case I wanted to decorate the base later. But out of the corner of my eye, a strange creature scurried by me. I got a horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach. I don't like that. Better get out of here. I tried to make my way back to the entrance, but I soon came to a terrible realization. I think I'm lost. On days 52 through 55, I stumbled around Ikea, but the more I searched for a way out, the more I felt like I was making circles. This place is a maze. I've seen this room four times now. The monster from before scurried by again, which urged me to keep moving. This went on until finally I had enough. You know what? Who's there? Come out! The monster lunged at me and began to attack. I took out my blood sword and we battled it out. It was fast, which made it tough to fight it off, especially since I was in his domain. He used the hallways and corridors to his advantage to land swift attacks. Luckily, his only weapon seemed to be a mop. I was also much more skilled at fighting thanks to my previous battles. After a lot of fighting, I had had enough, so I grew huge to intimidate him and end the fight. 
Dude, what was that all about? I get lonely here. Nobody really likes Ikea. They all leave. Well, I'm building a team. Would you like to join? Heck yeah. The monster showed me to the exit and the two of us left together. On days 56 through 59, I dropped off my new recruit at the base. Later in the day, I came across a ghost hunter. <laughs> this looks like some fun. Hello, we're trying to contact any nearby ghost. If you're here, tell us now. Ooh, I am here. Holy cow, it worked. I mean, uh, hello. If you're there, prove it. I honed in all my training with the giant zombie and managed to shrink down incredibly small. I used my tiny size to sink by the ghost hunter and break a nearby block. Ah! Oh my god, oh my god. Uh, uh, how did you die? I choked on a steak. Now I'm doomed to eternal hunger. Uh, I have an apple if you want. Uh, no, I think I want you. The hunter ran away, leaving me to have a good laugh. Once I was done, I continued on my way. On day 60 through 63, I returned back to the base and tied up the loose ends on what I was building previously. After I finished, Hero Brian was waiting for me outside. You've done well with getting other cryptids to trust you, but now you need to learn how to haunt better. What do you mean? I'm great at haunting. You're great at staring at people, but there's more to haunting than that. Allow me to show you. Hero Brian took me to the strange pyramids I had seen a few weeks prior. People need more build-up to be scared. I leave strange structures like these pyramids. What is a sign you can leave? I've got something in mind. I walked in an open area and left tons of giant footprints everywhere. As I finished up, Hero Brian and I hid until night fell and waited for a victim. After a bit of waiting, a player finally approached the area. Um, that doesn't look natural. You don't need to be up front to scare. You should obscure yourself from afar before going in for the jump scare. I did as I was told and revealed myself in the fog to the player. Oh my god, that's giant Alex. Now, go in for the scare. I jump scared the player, causing them to freak out and crash their game. Whoa, I did it! Great work, Giant Alex. Now that you're well-versed in scaring, keep expanding your team. On days 64 through 67, I returned back to the secret base and noticed that we are running low on wheat for the cows. Huh, better start building a farm for them. I found a spot and quickly built a farm for the cows and the rest of my residents. Looking good. With the wheat problem solved, I decided that the base itself could use some sprucing up. I started by adding a little community area for all the cryptids to hang out whenever they feel like. Thanks to my improved shrinking powers, I managed to shrink down long enough to decorate the interior some more as well. I placed down some bookshelves and ferns, completing a cute little hangout center. I love it. I changed some of the blocks of the base so that things looked a bit more appealing overall. Finally, my upgrade was complete. After finishing, 999 came up to me. Hey, little guy, what's up? I wanted to thank you for all your hard work. Take this. He then gave me a potion of regeneration. Thank you. I'll definitely put this to good use. On day 68 through 71, I was exploring late at night when I suddenly stumbled upon a sign that said slash stop. That's kind of weird. I continued to explore, and I kept finding more and more similar signs until finding a field filled with hundreds of them. Is someone trying to stop the server? I investigated the signs further, but nothing seemed out of the ordinary until someone started spamming the chat. Player.number303, object successfully summoned. What in the world? Who's doing this? I was already in so deep, so I kept pressing onwards until I finally encountered a single sign that said make a wish. Okay, I'm really starting to get freaked out. Just then, a strange ghost-like entity appeared in the distance. It was hard to make out who or what it was though. Hello? Are you another cryptid? All of a sudden, a blindness effect came over me and the screen started to glitch out. I was beginning to panic. Make it stop! Once the blindness finally faded, the entity and the signs were all gone. What the heck was that? Hope I don't run into that guy again. On days 72 through 76, I set out in search of some more materials. During my travels, I heard a high-pitched scream. Help! Giant! Please! 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 Help! What? Hello? Who's there? I looked down to see an ant below me, freaking out for my attention. I couldn't understand what they were saying, so I shrunk down to a more appropriate size. Wow, that actually worked. Giant! Alex! We need your help! Our home is being ravaged by wasps! Sure, I'd be happy to help. I sought out the horrific insect until finally arriving at the entrance to its nest. Inside, a wasp was waiting for me. You dare enter my domain, tiny person? Yeah, I do, but I'm not so tiny. What? 
What are you doing? Uh, one second. I'm trying to do a thing. Uh, well, shoot. I'm going to have to fight this dude tiny. The wasp charged full speed at me. I tried my best to fend them off, but I was pathetically small. If I was big, this fight would have been easy. Super tiny? It was the hardest fight of my life. The wasp was able to fly and attack me with its stinger. Even so, I kept at it. Ugh, stupid powers. I chipped away at the insect, but suddenly more of the swarm emerged from the nest. I used my blood sword to catch them on fire and keep them at bay. Finally, I managed to slay the whole colony. Yeah, take that. Upon their death, one of the wasps dropped an armlet of resistance, which I took for safekeeping. This should come in handy. On days 77 through 79, I returned home my normal size to find that the house had been completely replaced by nether bricks. What in the world? Weird. I went inside to investigate further and discovered a shulker box at the center of my house. Inside was a note with strange symbols. This keeps getting weirder. I walked outside and suddenly discovered I was in the nether. In front of me stood a strange entity. Hello, I'm 1241. Sorry for the cryptic messaging, but I had to have a meeting with you in secret. No worries, I'm pretty used to weird stuff at this point. Sus is draining my powers. I can feel it each passing day. I am weaker, and my hold on this reality is being loosened. Then join my cause. We may be cryptids, but we're entitled to this server. I will join you, Giant Alex. But if I have to do this, you must help me first. Sure, what is it? You must fight and kill the Ender Dragon for me. What? Why? That will reveal itself in due time. They dropped a map to a stronghold for me. Good luck. Before they said another word, myself and my home reappeared in the overworld. On days 80 through 83, I continued my expansion of the secret base. I cranked the flare up to 10 and made the place much bigger, even adding a second story with tons of beds. It was far more hospitable now. Looking good. After my expansion, I stayed at normal player size and headed off to the mines. While I was there, I found diamond and mined it up for myself. Sweet! With my new loot, I returned back to the base and crafted some more diamond armor. Ha! <laughs> I'll be unstoppable! However, as I walked back to the entrance, the sus leader was waiting right at my door. I grew huge just in case things got ugly. What are you doing here? Calm down, we need to talk. About what? You, you're recruiting cryptids from all across the server. That has to stop. It'll just end with you and the rest of the lot dead. You're gonna kill us no matter what, so I'll pass. Not necessarily, in due time perhaps, but first we must capture and experiment on every single one of you, extract your powers, and use them for our own gain. You're sick! I'll never give you access to my powers! <laughs> but you already have! Just then, the sus leader grew huge, even bigger than I ever had! The extermination of all cryptids begins today! But we were here first! You can't do this to us! It doesn't matter who is here first. We are here now. The leader stomped away, leaving me worried about the fate of myself and the other cryptids. I have to stop that guy. On days 84 through 88, I knew that if I was going to stand a chance against Sus, I was going to have to master my growth powers. So that day, I resumed training with the giant zombie. Okay, Giant Alex, your first test is an obstacle course. In front of you are doorways, each of differing sizes. You must pass through each of them at the appropriate size. I got this! The first door was giant, so I walked through easy. The second door was small, so I focused hard and managed to shrink small enough to go through. Next was another giant doorway. After a moment to focus, I grew big and progressed through the course. I must have gotten too eager, because I ran face first into the next wall. Ow! Okay, okay, small, small, noted. I drink again and continue the course until finally finishing it strong. Your second test is using shrinking to evade attacks. I will fire arrows at you, and you must remain large for as long as possible. When the arrow is about to land, shrink to evade the attack. Reaction time. Got it. The second test began, and the first arrow came flying towards me. Shrink, 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 ow! You're too panicked. Quiet your soul and focus. I did as I was told as he fired the next arrow. Shrink, shrink, shrink! I shrank down small and narrowly dodged the arrow. Woohoo! Your lessons are nearly complete. All that remains is the final test. You must use all you've learned to best me in battle. Bring it on! 
we began to battle it out. I used my blood sword to try and get the one up on him, but he evaded me using his own drinking powers. When I wasn't expecting it, he would grow giant again and land a clean hit on me. You gotta do better than that. Remember your training. He was right. Going in blindly wouldn't do me any good. I shifted my strategy and began to shrink as he was about to hit me. I used my small size to move around his legs and grow big for a big hit. But even with my strategy working, he was too powerful. Am I really going to lose? Just then, I grew bigger than ever before. I managed to push through and win the battle. I did it! Excellent work, Giant Alex. I have nothing more to teach you. May your new knowledge serve you well. On days 89 through 91, I was feeling much stronger. It was time to slay the Ender Dragon, but I had a couple of things to do first. I shrank down and went to the mines. There I found some more diamond, which I used to finish some diamond armor. While I was at it, I crafted some additional beds as well. It's go time. I used the map that 1241 gave me and arrived at the stronghold. There, the end portal was already lit and ready for me to travel. That's convenient. I hopped through to find the Ender Dragon flying in circles. A little player? You stand no chance against me. Oh yeah? What about now? I grew into my full giant size and the battle with the end dragon began. I was huge, so I was able to run up to each of the pillars and destroy them with ease. Impossible! How are you doing this? I ignored the pathetic lizard and dealt massive damage to them with my blood sword. They tried to fight me back, but they were no match for my size and power. Please, without me, Sus will fall! Exactly! I put the dragon out of its misery, winning me the battle! Yay! Upon their death, they dropped an orb of regeneration. This must be how the sus agents regenerate so fast. On days 92 through 95, I returned home to the secret base. I wasn't sure how to contact 1241, but I figured they could hear me from here. 1241? I slayed the dragon! As I suspected, I was immediately teleported back to the nether. Excellent, Excellent work, work, Alex. I, I can sense, sense you have the orb. orb. Yeah, is this the source of sus's power? Exactly, I can't, I can't tell you how, but, but they've they negotiated, negotiated a deal with the ender dragon. dragon. They, they provide victims. victims. She, she provides regeneration orbs, orbs just, just like hers. Like now that you've slayed them, we can take down Sus. Perfect! So what do we do now? I'm too weak to come with you, but I will assist in recon. We must go back to Sus headquarters, destroy it, and destroy the Sus leader. You got a deal. I was teleported back to the overworld, but everything was on fire! On days 96 through 98, Sus guards stormed the base. They had taken all of my cryptid friends. Where are my friends? Where is 999? <laughs> They're in better hands now. You'll pay for this! I immediately began fighting them, but unlike before, they went down like the flies they were. I slayed the army left and right, and they were starting to panic. How are you doing this? We have the power of the Ender Dragon on our side. The Ender Dragon is dead. Enjoy mortality, gentlemen. The battle raged on, and I took them down one by one. They were no match for my strength or my drinking powers. I battled until only one guard was remaining. Leave now and I'll spare your life. You know, this is still really in the testing phase, but why not? The guards drank a potion and transformed into a terrifying monster. I'd like to introduce you to Sus's first man-made cryptid. I wasn't afraid of whatever artificial cryptid they made. I drank my potion of regeneration and continued to fight on like nothing happened. But the Sus agent quickly revealed that he was far more fierce than what I was up against before. He was incredibly fast and was able to poison me. His attacks would deal massive damage over time. <laughs> What's the matter? Getting overwhelmed? I'm not scared of a cheap knockoff. I honed in all of my powers and slayed the beast. This ends now. On day 99, I began to return to the Sus HQ. I was gonna stop all of this from the source. I passed through multiple biomes until finally reaching it, the giant laboratory. All of my friends gotta be in here. I shrank down super small and made my way inside through an opening in the wall. I used my tiny size to stealth through the lab. The place was littered with guards. Luckily, my small size allowed me to take them down easily. Intruder alert, DEFCON 5. What's happening? Who's doing this? The cryptid that's gonna burn this place to the ground. I killed the guard and shrank down so I could continue forward, until finally finding a sign titled Testing Laboratory. This must be the place. On day 100, I walked into the testing lab to finish this once and for all. It was a massive room. The ceiling seemed to go on for miles. This place is creepy. At the back of the room, I found the sus leader. There, he had all of my friends trapped in glass boxes. You, let my friends go. What have we ever done to you? Oh, I don't know. Haunt our servers, mess with our games, scare and hurt innocent people. We were antagonized. We've been here long before all of you. We aren't yours to experiment on. All valid points, little Alex. But you see, I simply don't care. This is my world. This is my server. And I can do whatever I want with it. 
I knew this battle would be tough, so I grew into my normal size and began to go at him with my blood sword. The sus leader stayed small, but even in his normal size, he was able to pack a punch. He had the most advanced cryptid killing technology and I could definitely feel it. However, I was still much stronger in my large size. That's it. Let's even the playing field. The sus leader grew to a massive size to match mine and continued to use his ender sword to beat me down. Unfortunately for him, I had mastered my powers. I shrank super small and started to go for his legs. Now stop that! Not until you stop hurting cryptids! Never! Then you leave me no choice! I grew as large as I could muster, larger than I ever had before. The leader was shocked by my display of power and stood stunned at my feet. Oh my... God. Say goodnight to Sus. I stepped on the leader, killing him and freeing all of my friends from Sus. I did it! I shrank back to my normal size and broke everyone out of their cells. And now we can be free. E -e 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 Dang it!